Hello, Mitra here. This is a response to the video My Response to Antiboo 86 on Veganism by Nate263, Philosopher Sir. A video, as its name implies, regarding veganism. First of all, Philosopher Sir, I'll say I'm a vegan utilitarianist and I compliment you very much for your video, which made good efforts and good conclusions on both veganism and ethical stances. This video of mine is just minor complimentary comments to the points of view you already raised. You'll notice in the video I write down what I say, mostly because I think my accent is strange, but if you can understand me as it is, then you can very well not read me if you prefer. Now, in Dr. Keegan's position, it was clear that he should have used other neurologically supported activities in his situation, instead of just activities where high intellect plays a key role to support his view. Antibu86 uses to support this reliance on intelligence that we really are intelligent in many ways, and I agree with him in that. Yet, as you point out, this may not help the cause if the person listening does not agree to having different intelligences. But Dr. Keegan's position was first related to harm. What I see here is that intelligence really isn't such a morally important trait as we attempt to make of it. It is important, but not the only important trait. Whether you think of artistic abilities or other abilities as intelligence or not, you will probably identify moral values in abilities that are not traditionally linked to intelligence. Take this example. We have two adolescents who are equally dumb, borderline retarded, but one, as opposed to the other, manages to either cook acceptably, have little dance jigs that are almost amusing, or draw pictures generally regarded as quite beautiful. They force us to inevitably kill one of the two or give more moral value to one of the two. Most of us, in that case, would value slightly more the adolescent slightly more skilled, and in a cold pick save him, whether we call those abilities intelligence or not. The overall abilities of an individual have moral value, whether social, intellectual, artistic, motor abilities, sentience or otherwise. Generally, animals have more abilities the more neurologically capable they are. Humans in general are more capable than cows, and cows more capable than oysters. The more neurologically capable a being is, the more harm you're doing by killing him. In choosing between killing one of two humans, being emotionally impartial, we'd save the most all-around capable one, and still generally we'd rather kill a cow than a human, or a wheat spike before a cow, following that same moral stance. The moral spectrum, or moral degrees of value described here, are already observed by us whether we are conscious of it or not. As Antibu86 says with veganism, in moral value we don't place a line, but rather give more moral credit to some over others in a wide scale. Most Christians, if opposing homosexuality, will not think being homosexual is as wrong as being a murderer or a rapist, IQ apart. Now onto your mentioning of the moral value of a baby. Within the principle of harm, it is generally bad to kill and eat a young baby as opposed to killing and eating a cow, not because of the baby being a baby, thus stupid. That he is stupider as a baby is relatively irrelevant. The moral value of a baby mostly relies in his future as a child and an adult. He has moral worth mostly because of what he's going to become. If we give him support and raise him, it will be not long before he develops more capabilities than a cow or become more intelligent than a cow. And, of course, killing and eating fruits will be ethically better than killing either. Where killing and eating that baby would be ethically better than eating a cow is if the baby were to continue to have that mentality of a baby of few weeks for the rest of his life. Given that he would be unable to develop capabilities further from or matching the ones that a cow has, family wishes apart, Killing the baby instead of the cow would be a significantly good ethical choice, if a human in that situation is permitted to take the decision. But again, overall, it's just best to generally eat veggies instead, saving both baby and cow. What I wanted to point out with this is that the argument of Antibu86 you say is non sector is not a non sector since the moral values of babies are dependent on not as much to their state as babies, but to their state as growing humans. So, changing subject, I'm happy that you liked Peter Singer's book on animal rights. 
being consequentialist, he would say that you disagree with some of his meta ethics is not as important as the fact that you agree with him in supporting animal life, which is the important thing. To end the video, I want to pay attention to the matter of spreading veganism to the public. I don't have a clear answer of what is best overall in that regard. I mean, myself, I can clearly debate with a person on why veganism is a good thing, so in most instances I choose to discuss instead of using shock images. But this ability to morally defend one's point of view is not something that everyone has. Many, many vegans are vegans almost like following a religion, where they stick to dogmas and don't see beyond. Equally, I think some people who are not vegan would not become vegan if we were to initially discuss intellectually with them, but maybe those shock images will stay in their conscience. I feel I'm playing the devil's advocate. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that I don't dismiss altogether using shock images in some situations, while I see the high value of ethical discussion. Maybe we could elaborate more on those grounds.